Good. All right. Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Jeff Browning after his third place finish at the 2016 Western States 100. Jeff, you ran one hell of a race out there. <laughs> Thanks, man. Did it feel that way? Yeah, it felt good. I mean, stick to my, my typical plan of going out easy and then steady pressure and yeah and it paid off and does it feel like that does it feel like steady pressure because externally it looks like you're you know accelerating well, well, but i am steady <laughs> putting steady pressure on them to the finish yeah. um you know I, it, it gets more and more pressure towards the end um but i, I mean i've kind of just kind of you know after so many hundreds i kind of it's the only fun way to do it mm -hmm. I think the other ways are like risky and hurt you know? and like i'd imagine it's like both physically and mentally more fun that way? It is, because you're picking people off. It's always <laughs> nice to pick people off. You know, not get picked off. Yeah. Right. Uh, and you probably have enough experience that when you're in 20th place, mile 30 or whatever, you know, that you're not like, oh, I'm having a horrible race, I'm in 20th. Yeah, no, I don't worry about my place at all. I'm not really checking place yeah. until the second half, you know? Um, then I'm checking in, like, where am I now? And then, yeah. you know, I, I got to run within myself for the first half at least, so, and then, then start bringing it a little more, but, um, yeah. Did you have any, uh, any low patches along the way? No, not really. Um, you know, hot a few times where it's just like, oh man. And I did, like, probably take a little too many caffeinated, uh, too much caffeine during the race, but. That could be entertaining. Right? Yeah, I, got, I, mean, I got a couple heart palpitations, and I was like, okay, I, I backed off on no caffeine for a while. <laughs> And then felt better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any little adjustments. Any particularly bright spots along the way? Um, bright spots. Like any place where you just felt like, um, like you were just totally on. You know, I really. I mean, I felt pretty good down through the river, and then um, uh, I really felt good this from Green Gate in. Like I, I, everything kind of was just smooth. I felt good. I could run hills. Um, you know, and power hike well. I mean, I'm getting ready for Hard Rock, so my hiking's okay right now, for sure. You know, I, I definitely hiked a lot in the canyons pretty hard. You know, like, you definitely got in Hard Rock mode. Now, the way you run, does it end up, like, a lot of times it's nice to have some company in 100 mile out cool. on the course. Yeah. But you're kind of moving your, you know, way up for two thirds of the race. Are you running with anybody, or is it lonely out there? Um, I ran with some people during the day, but in this race, there's not a lot of chatting going on. No. You know, a little early, we all chat all the way up to Scarman, everybody does, and so that's that's your social, like, catch up with everybody. Yeah. And then everybody's kind of, once they go over the top, it's like kind of every man for themselves, it, it seems like to me. And I mean, I haven't done this for 14 years, so, <laughs> but that was the vibe I got, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, there's a little chatting here and there if you are around, end up being around someone, but it's so technical in the high country too, you can't really chat, you gotta be like, you can do little short conversations, but you're yeah. trying to focus. So, I mean, you've done a lot of hundreds. You, you still consider that first part pretty technical. Well, it's not yeah. crazy technical, but it's enough you got to pay attention. And so you can't be like just off ah, and talking or whatever. So, I, I mean, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, you just got to run within yourself. And that's I, and I end up being kind of no man's land usually. That's, that's what I mean. By I starting mean. easy like that. <laughs> and so I'm usually by myself. Which I, I like. I'm mean, I train by myself. It's my quiet time. I mean, I have a wife and three kids, and I love them very much. And I, but I work at a job that's kind of, you know, got a lot of social interaction too as a graphic designer. And and so it's nice. That's my like running is my time where I'm like quiet time. And so hundreds are just a big day of quiet time. Yeah. And I really like that. And that's why I don't like having I don't like having a pacer. I don't like having that external like stimulus i'd rather just like cruise and no, like, then, enjoy like, myself so, like having some cruise and aid stations not like that bothers you no no, uh, no 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 do you get any energy from that like oh, oh totally <laughs> especially in this trip i mean the volunteers are off the hook here There's so many and people are just i mean you don't you don't have to fill bottles and like the what do you want and you just you know everybody's super helpful um it, it's it's a it's above and beyond here for sure um but it really helps helps go fast if we didn't have that it would be hard to go fast now you know, you've won a lot of hundreds, but not nothing that has a competition like this. Do you think this is maybe your best ultra performance or, or up there? Or? No, no, I wasn't fully ready. I had a little calf issue, like like after the Memorial Day train runs, and I basically tapered from Memorial Day train mm -hmm. runs. So um, I definitely didn't train for Western States, like leg speed, downhill running, as much as I would normally, or if I was only focusing on Western States. But I definitely, there's there's 14 years of pinned up, like, haven't got in, yeah. got a little something to prove type of thing. 
Um, definitely comes into play in my mind, you know. I mean, just because I've been talking about it for so long, I've been trying to get in for, into it for so long, um, that to finally have a chance, I didn't want to blow it. <laughs> you know, I just I really wanted to execute, and I think, um, yeah, you did. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I felt good about the day, for good. sure. Yeah. Now, uh, obviously you were running ultras yesterday, but it's kind of a course where you can have a choice between road shoes and trail shoes and beefier shoes and faster shoes. I know back in like Patagonia Fort Worth days you wore a pretty minimal shoe. Like yeah. what were you wearing out there yesterday? Lone Peak 2.5s. So kind of in the middle of the range. Yeah, that's kind of been my new, my, my most favorite shoe now mm -hmm. um, after, I don't know, three or four hundreds in it. Um, it it's, it's, you know, it's just the right balance of just enough especially late in the course, mm -hmm. and then having just a good traction, and it drains really well. So, um, yeah, it's been a good shoe for sure, I love it. So, probably use that uh, in a couple weeks as well? Yeah, I'll probably use that at Hard Rock. Um, yeah, I've got another pair, so throw those on. I'm sure these are a little, I always find the shoes are a little flapped out after, yeah. <laughs> after 100. There's a lot more well, because yeah, there's a lot more pounding at the end, like well, and, and just dirt and like wet, and they're constantly wet, and you know, what I mean, they like, break down. Yeah, I think I don't know what it is about the hundreds that does it to shoes. I find they kind of pack out. Like if you if you have any inconsistency in your stride, like that gets magnified. Yeah, totally. Well, it gets magnified late for sure. I definitely like heel strike on my right foot more. Oh. <laughs> yeah, after hundred, the, the, the second half. If you look the at the medial of my like, right shoe, is like the heel just <laughs> popped out. Um, now at the front of the hundred, like this. You don't often see a lot of dudes wearing gaiters. When did you uh, make the conversion? Well, Jesse Haynes and I did the trip through um, Oahe in May. It's the first time I, I've been running with the gaiters at winter, but I, I tried them out for just desert running, and I realized they didn't ever have to do a shoe dump, yeah. ever, during the whole race. And normally you have to do a few, especially with like loose stuff, and, and this course definitely has some loose stuff, especially in the high country. Mm -hmm. And so um, I decided at the last minute to wear them, um, and I'm stoked I did because, I mean, I, I didn't do one shoe adjustment the whole race. But my feet got wet and I got a little bit of laceration or maceration, whatever you call it. Maceration, yeah. The, 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 it's like a you know, little fold in my foot. Now, skin. so why did you, I mean, do you think it's probably because there's a little less breathability in your shoes? No, of, it's because, because your feet are saturated and yeah. wet and like sweaty and hot. And I didn't do a shoe. I, it made me realize that it's probably smart to do a sock, sock change maybe once or twice during this race, quickly. Yeah. It makes up for it because my definitely my pace was suffering on the downhills in the very end um, because of that. And on this course, you can actually make a couple strategic sock changes because you have long stretches then when you're not getting wet. Exactly. Right. Right after the river and you know like maybe like after the canyons. Yeah. Like you can I change a Michigan two, bluff and yeah, two, two, yeah, two spots would like be great, great for that. And it really, it really refreshes. Like just mentally, like oh my feet feel good for. Yeah, and I never change. I never ever change, and so I've never really had foot problems except after Ultra Fuel. Or, gotcha. And when I got, I had like trench foot at that race. So and that's when I was like, huh, ah, might be smart to change socks every once in a while. So of course I didn't do it in this race, but.